This is Code Pen, and obviously what this game is, is Brick Breaker. Depending on your screen, you might not be able to see it that well. In Code Pen, you can always grab this center bar, hold your mouse down, and pull it up or down to see more code or more of this. So that's what the game looks like. I'm going to go ahead and restart it. To restart, don't hit refresh because the edits we make to our code will disappear if you do that. What I'm going to do is just delete what's here. Let's see, L, and then I'm going to add it right back, and that will refresh the page itself. Ooh, I already, already. Let's get, see how we do here. And you get the basic idea. I'm trying to eliminate all the blocks. I'm going to let the game end by losing. Oh, maybe not. Well, eventually I'll lose. And there we are. And it pops up with this message. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, this code looks intimidating. There's a lot of it. But together we're going to work on changing it, on making it our own. I originally created this using a tor 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 tutorial on Manzilla. Here's the link to that. It is excellent. I changed it up a bit. And then the short link to get back to this code is bit.ly calboat or this URL. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is HTML. HTML is what's putting this stuff on the page. So brick breaker. Let's see where that is. That is here. It's in an, this is called a tag, h1 tag. That's a heading tag. It's the largest. Then we have goal, eliminate all bricks, h4. That's a heading tag, but it's a bit smaller. And actually, we're going to start editing right away. Go ahead and in the h4 tag, I'm going to delete all of this, the goal, and go ahead and write your first name. Just your first name, your first name. Uh, let's say my first name is Bob. Right? Or I could write Mr. since I'm a teacher for Mr. Kaiser. I think Bob it will be for now. Go ahead and put your first name right there. And if you notice, when we do that, it automatically updates and places it on the screen live. So excellent. We're already getting started editing this code. Let's change a few more things now. What I'm going to try to do next is change the color name over. Oh, right. Is And it will keep saying that because as we change, it's going to update it. What I'm going to do next is try to change the background color of all of the HTML, of all this HTML on the page, the document, the entire document. All right. Notice it is plain right now. It is blank. So what styles HTML is called CSS. So I know right away what's going to be styling our HTML is going to be in here. It's CSS. And so I want to change the HTML, the whole thing. So if you look through this code, and again, it kind of looks intimidating, this is what's giving things color or shape and stuff like that. So canvas here, well, canvas is referring to the game canvas. So if I look in here, there is something called canvas, and it's right here. So that's what's changing up this. If I scroll down H1, our title tag, well, look, its color is blue because that's what's changing this h1 tag. So how could we change the entire HTML document? Go ahead and pause and try to figure that out. We want to change the background color. So at this point, unpause. If you've, uh, you sh hopefully you've paused it, I mean, and you're listening again and tried to figure it out on your own. Um, but regardless, I'll go ahead and demonstrate. It will be in the HTML tag, and notice it's blank here. It's just white. So what I will do is in background color, I'm going to go ahead and, I don't know, make mine yellow. And wow, updated right away. And maybe that's a, br a bit bright. Um, let's try light blue. And perfect. I'll leave it like that. So now I have a new background color. You can change the colors of most of the elements. I'm going to go ahead and look at it a bit more on this page. So maybe you want to change the color of your name, which my fake one was Bob. If I scroll down, our name was in what's called an H4 tag. Well, here we are, H4, and it's colored green. Um, let's say I wanted that to be, I don't know, purple. If I click off of it, boom, it changed colors right away. Okay, so now let's go into the JavaScript is also changing some of the color of our elements. So I'm going to start messing with that. So over here, this is all of the code. And there's a lot. It kind of looks scary, to be honest. 
some of this is stuff we can understand no matter what, right? So this is called a function, draw paddle. That creates the paddle. This is creating our bricks. That draws the score. Way, way up here are variables. Just like in math where x and y sometimes equal a number, this variable x, well, this equals this formula. This dx equals this number or a paddle height. They're variables that are used. So we're going to focus on colors first. I can kind of start scrolling through and looking for colors. For instance, I think this is orange for my brick. So I'm going to scroll down, 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 key up, mouse handler, collision detector. What I'm doing, and I should clarify, I'm reading these function names. A function name it kind of tells you what that chunk of code does. So if I look, look at these indentions. It goes in. So there's where my function starts. Ooh, this is a large one. And it ends here. Here's a new function. There's the bracket function draw ball. So I bet that draws our ball. Here's the start of it. And I know this is the end because if I look, it's the same line. Right? And I was going to look for bricks. So here's a function paddle, draw paddle. Oop, draw bricks. And let's see. Wow, this is a bigger function. It goes all the way down. But same deal. If you notice, it starts here and goes down here. This looks like it appears on the same line, but it doesn't. If I move this over, so you can kind of see that's where our function starts and ends. So we're looking for a color within draw bricks. And I think my color down here was orange. So does it say orange somewhere? Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out how to change the color of the bricks on your own. Hopefully you paused it, but if not, or even if I'm going to show you regardless, draw bricks is our function. Way down here, it's fill style. For me, it's on line 99. It might be on a slightly different line for you. And you can choose any color you want. Make sure you leave the quotes. If you make a mistake on this, which you will do, well, at least I did a lot. Oh no, obviously that is a mistake. You can always on your keyboard hit control Z and it will undo what you've done. You can hit it a lot of times. So I've made tons of mistakes. I'm deleting all sorts of things. I'm changing stuff. Three mistakes. If I keep hitting it, I'm just going to keep going till my game looks like it's working again. If you go too far, you can always hit control shift Z to redo something. To make sure it works though, you need to click where you want to re or undo. So if I deleted something over here and I think it broke my code, if I click over here and click control Z, that undoes something over here. You need to click the cursor where the mistake was made and then try hitting control and Z. So that's super handy. Oh, is it not working yet? Well, let's keep trying. Control Z. Control Z. There we go. We got it back up and running. So I'm going to go ahead and hmm, I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe yellow. I'm not, how's that going to look? Oof. Actually, let's just try doing plain white. Does that look all right? Yeah, I'm going to leave it like that. You pick your own color. Once you have done this, go ahead and try to find draw bricks, go to ahead and fight, try to find draw ball and see if you can figure out how to change that color, right? Or draw scores, draw lives. Go ahead through the code and see if you can figure out what colors you can change on your own. Make this your own. Go ahead and pause the video and do that now. Hopefully you have done that. Um, you can make it all sorts of different colors. I'm going to demonstrate how to do this for a few of them. So for instance, we already did draw bricks. Uh, like I said, draw score. Well, I bet that's our score. Maybe I want to make our score red. I'm not sure. Oop, I don't mean to do a capital. Red. And now let's see. Mm, that's all right, but I don't know. Pink. Oh, I can't see that very well. Um, let's do purple. Okay, 
I'll leave it like that. Maybe that's what it was though. Oh well. And now let's say lives. I want it to match. So I'm going to go ahead and make our lives purple. There we are. And now we have changed those colors. Let's keep looking for other stuff. So the paddle is tricky because I left the paddle's color as a hex code. A hex code does not just say red, green, or blue. It's computer code that tells it a specific color. So what you can do though is if I look down here on draw bricks, fill style, this one says white, right? Now how did I change it on draw score? In the draw score function, if I go down, I changed it to purple. What did I do? I looked at fill style. So let's go up to the paddle. This is the paddle function, function draw paddle. And in between these lines here, let's look for fill style. You should try to pause this now and change the color of the paddle on your own. So hopefully you got it figured out, but if not, for me it's on line 85. It might be a slightly different line for you, but it says CTX fill style inside this draw paddle function. I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this. If you want, you could try messing with the hex code yourself. Um, I know 00 is going to be a lighter color, so let's do FF for the beginning. And that's usually a darker one, I believe. Maybe. Oh, just kidding. Zero, uh, I got it switched around on us. Let's try that. And zeros, all zeros is black, F, capital F is light. But regardless, let's go ahead and do just a normal one like this. And I'm going to make it, uh, what color is down there? Oh, let's make it red. Okay, and there we are. We've changed the paddle now. So, at this point, I want you to pause the video and try to figure out how to change the canvas's size. Remember, this is our game canvas here. That is the game canvas. I want to increase it, make it larger, make the game board, this thing, larger. See if you can figure out how to do that. I'll tell you, it's in the HTML. Give it a shot, see if you can figure it out. Pause the video now and try that. Hopefully you paused the video and figured it out and have a fancy large game canvas. If not, let's go ahead and go over it. I'm going to go way over here to my HTML. I'm going to scroll down. And this one is on line 24, it looks like, canvas. And notice where it says width. Let's try changing that. Let's do, I don't know, 600. Click off of it. Uh, that's all right. Maybe I even want it a little bit larger. 800. Sure, that looks like a good size. But now we have all of this open space and uh, no bricks in it. So let's see if we can find how to add those bricks back. I'm going to give you a hint and then see if you can do it. To add bricks, you would want to look in the JavaScript. You do want to look in the JavaScript. It is a variable towards the top. All variables are declared towards the top in programming. The variable is something to do with a column and a row. So to add bricks, you're looking for a variable towards the top. Variables start with VAR and then a space. That will change the column and the row numbers of bricks. It's in the JavaScript. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do that, if you can change it. Hopefully you paused the video and figured it out, and now you have a bunch of bricks on your screen. If not, I'm going to go over it some. So I scrolled all the way to the top of my JavaScript over here, and I am going to make some changes. Let's see, ball right now, nope, that's not what I need, that's not what I need, that's not what I need. I am looking for something to do with column and rows. So for me, that would be line 13, brick row count. It's at 5. I think this is it. Let's change it to, I don't know. 
8. What does that do? Oh, that increased it, but I think I need a bit more. Maybe 10? Um, yeah, that looks good. So now I have a whole bunch more bricks on my screen. Excellent. What we can do now, look through these variables on your own and make some changes. Remember, if I make a mistake, for example, if I did something that broke the game, right? Like brick offset left, I don't know, that. Oops, all my bricks disappeared. You can hit Control Z as long as you click on the screen you're on to undo something. So change some of these. Read them, try it out. If you break something, hit Control Z, undo it, and keep going. Go ahead, pause the video and make some changes. I'll talk about it in, uh, after you unpause it. Things I would have changed is the score, for example. On line 20, where it says score variable, oh, I meant lives. On line 21, maybe you want to increase the lives to make it easier or more difficult. I'm going to increase mine from 3 to 5. And now you start with 5 lives. You can also do things like add a padding. Nope, I want to do where is rows. Brick column. Oh, columns. Let's see if I add this 6. It should. Woo. May, and maybe that's too many. Maybe I only want meh, 5. There we are. Maybe I want to move my bricks a little bit over. So let's see if I change my brick offset top at left. Um, let's change this to 20. Does that do anything? Oh, it moved them a tiny bit. Um, sure. Um, yeah, so let's keep going on this. If you do happen to change ball radius to something crazy like 100, that is going to increase the size, obviously. But you're going to lose right away because the ball is always going to be off the screen. So be careful with ball radius. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. At this point, I want you to try to figure out how to change the height of your canvas, how big it is. Change the height and add more bricks to a column. Pause the video and see if you can do that. Hopefully you figured it out. It's similar to how we did width. Over here, you want to go to canvas height, and you just change this up maybe to, let's do 500, whatever you would like. And then column, I changed mine to 5 earlier. Let's change it to 8. And you might not want as large of a board as this, but I'm just using this as an example. Okay? So I want, or what you should be doing now, is start making this your own. You might want to change this, the H1 color. You might want to mess with the variables more. All right? I'm not even sure what all of these do. Paddle height? Oh, maybe I can, maybe we want to decrease the size of our paddle. Let's see if that does anything. Oh yeah, our paddle's definitely smaller to make it more difficult, okay? And again, remember, if you decide you really don't like something, click back on your code and click Control-Z to undo, and it will go right back to how it was. Make sure you have changed the colors of all these elements, the ball as well. For the canvas, those colors are way over here, and they look weird. There are hex codes again, but give it a shot. You can even do that. You can delete the whole hex code and try, I don't know, red. Let's see what that does. Hmm, I'm not sure what that did. So let's try. Oh, that must be the default. Red linear. Let's see if changing this does something. Red. Whoa. Um, yellow. Try stuff out. Oh, I don't like that. I just hit Control Z to undo it. All right. Maybe you want a gradient background on your bricks. I'm going to hit copy. Or on your whole page. Or on your letters. I'm actually going to add it to my whole page. And hit paste. It's probably going to look weird, right? I'm not going to leave that, but you get the idea. Make this interesting. 
Um, and we will be turning it in at the end of class. So give it your best shot. I'm excited to see what you can do.